This is Linda Sadcast from ScrappersGuide.com, here to tell you about the changes and new features of Photoshop Elements 8. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the user interface, or what you'd call the desktop. You can choose between a dark or light desktop by going into Preferences, and I'll choose Edit, Preferences, and then General. On a Mac, you would choose Photoshop Elements, Preferences, and then General. And you have a choice here of a dark or light interface. I'll click on light so you can see what that looks like. There still isn't as much contrast as I would like to see for readability, so I still opt for the darker interface, which is the default. Now I'll click OK. The palettes are now called panels, and the layers panel has changed the location of its icons from the top to the bottom of the panel. To collapse and expand a panel, click once on the black bar across the top, click again to open it, or you can double click on the tab and double click again to expand it. The panels can be collapsed into icons by clicking on the double arrows in the upper right corner. You can collapse them even further by clicking on the left side and dragging to the right, and now they're just these little tiny icons. Click on one of the icons to open the panel and click again to close it and you can also expand the panel bin by clicking on the double arrows again. Panels can be moved around by clicking and dragging the bar across the top, this black bar up here. I'll just click and drag it to a new spot. They can also be moved out, and I'll click on a tab here and just move the layers panel out, and they can be nested together. So I'll click on the tab, come over the effects panel until I see a blue outline, then I can let go of my mouse and these two will be nested together and I can put them over in the corner if I want to. Click on a tab to make it the active panel. To return to the default setting, click on Reset Panels up at the top of your screen. The Project Bin is also a panel that can be moved just like any other panel. I'll click on the tab and if I bring it right next to my other panels until I see a blue line, I can let go of my mouse and it will dock to these panels. And now I can collapse it or expand it. If I want to move it back to its original position, I can click on the tab and just drag it down to the bottom until I see a blue line, and then let go of my mouse. To collapse and expand the project bin, click once on the black bar, and click again to expand it. Press tab to hide everything but the menu bar. Press tab again to bring them all back, and to hide just the panel bin and the project bin, press shift tab, and press shift tab again to bring them back. Files open in floating windows by default. You can move them around by clicking and dragging on the bar across the top as always. But here's something new. If you get too close to the options bar or to another file, your file will turn semi-transparent and you'll see a blue outline around the other photo. If you let go of your mouse, it will nest with the other file in a tab document. I can go back and forth between the two by clicking on the tabs. If you didn't intend to nest the files, no problem. Just click and drag it out by the tab. So this does take just a little bit of getting used to. In Windows, if you click on the Maximize mode, you're taken to a view that shows nothing but the photo and you cannot access any of the tools or menus. All you can do is minimize the photo again. However, you can get the same effect as Maximized by using the new Arrange menu. Open this menu and click on this first one, Consolidate All, and that puts all your files into tab documents, where you see only one file at a time. To switch to another photo, click on its tab, or double click on its icon in the project bin. To get back to the floating windows view, open the Arrange menu and choose Float All in Windows. Now let me show you how to move between tab documents. Use the Move tool and click and drag the item to the tab of another document, and just hold it there until that document appears. Then you can bring your mouse down and let go of your mouse. Press the Shift key if you want it to land in the center of your page. I'll move this over, and I'll also show you that you can move from the Project bin onto a document open on the desktop, and it will not turn into a smart object anymore, which is great. I love that about Photoshop Elements 8. Notice that it also puts the name of the file over here on the layer that's created, so that is very helpful when you want to know which files you used on a scrapbook page. 
I'm going to bring this purple forward by double clicking on it and show you that if you move from a thumbnail of a layered document in the project bin onto the desktop though, you run into a problem and that is that it flattens all those layers into one. Notice there's only one layer over here. So the method of moving from the project bin to the desktop really only works for single layer files. There's a new panel called the Adjustments panel that pops up when you access any of the adjustment layers from the black and white circle at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll choose Hue Saturation and here's the Adjustments panel. Make your changes just like you normally would. And I'll turn this into a slightly different color and then to close this or collapse it just click once on the bar across the top. If you use a keyboard shortcut or access these tools from the menu bar and I'll choose Enhance adjust color and adjust hue saturation, you get the old familiar dialog box. The edit tab above the panel bin is now a drop down menu so you can choose quick edit, guided edit, or go back to full edit. So there you have a more in-depth look at the Photoshop Elements 8 desktop. For more information on other new features, be sure to watch my other videos on Photoshop Elements 8. And if you enjoy learning about Photoshop Elements, you can find my DVD-ROM with over six hours of training free inside the Photoshop Elements 8 box for Windows at Costco. It should be available starting about mid-October 2009. If you don't have access to Costco or Costco Online, or if you are a Mac user, you can find the same training at my website, scrappersguide.com.